Rustler yachts have been building from here in Falmouth for the last 35 years, but all so far under 45 feet. This is the new flagship 57, and we're on board for a couple of early sea trials from the beautiful Fowl. Spoilt with the weather for a couple of days here, sailing in classic Cornish conditions and nice and calm summer August conditions as well. Now, beam reaching outside Falmouth, and it's the average speeds that are that, that are hitting home with a, a yacht this length. You start to get places quickly. It's a mid displacement yacht, and once she gets going, she keeps moving. So we're averaging, you know, sort of eight and a half, nine knots here, easily in what you can see is 12, 15 knots wind. So. Yeah, you get to get across the channel pretty quickly like this. It's also lovely being in this position, which is a very deep, protected cockpit. And that made a big difference yesterday when the breeze was up, because you feel like you're sailing from within the boat and not perched up on top of it, like centre cockpit yachts can be. You're still far enough aft, um, but look how deep down I am. And those sat in the cockpit as well. You really benefit from that protection all the sailing is done from within this area without having to step out and around the boat. So a few things that stand out features wise on the boat for me are um, the social space, spaces you get. So the, the layout is optimized for plenty of people to be able to enjoy it. Uh, you can see it just behind this helm seat area alone. You could sit four across here. Then you've got the push pit seats. Then you've got these large cockpit benches good for entertaining and when you step down into the interior you'll see how it's been concentrated around maximizing the social area around the saloon, galley and nav station, the heart of the boat that gets the most generous amount of space. So from the helm, you know, one big wheel, center wheel, but you still have pretty good vision going forward. This has a center plate as well, uh, so it's easy up down button for the center plate here. Within reach of the helm, you have electronic controls for the Yankee and stay sail furlers. Uh, and the main sheet, German lead main sheet, comes back to a winch each side as well. I would probably also ask for having uh, a block here so that you can lead the traveller, which comes through this jammer at the moment, around a block and back to this winch. At the moment, you have to winch it using a primary winch. Uh, easy solution to do though, and then, and then having some sort of uh, sheave here would allow you to work both a runner or the traveller from this winch without having to ask someone else to do it. But otherwise, it's a nice little area for the helmsman to be involved with the main sheet operation uh, and, and the keel and hydraulics as well. Moving into the cockpit, belt and braces stuff, typical rustler. Deep protected cockpit, long benches, plenty of space, nice big fixed table, good for entertaining. Primary winch on the combing outside but within reach, good spot. Um, there's no tail storage for this on this, but there you do get these good little lockers in here. So this one has shore power inlets for 110 and 220 volt and the hidden button for the primary as well. Moving forward, you've got coach roof winches for stay sail sheets uh, and for the running rigging as well, the tails of which are neatly put up against the combings here. Um, I'd probably opt for maybe having myself a self tacker track for the stay sail as well, just one less thing to manage when you're going through tacks and jibes. So, coming out of the cockpit, it feels really safe and sturdy on deck. Uh, you'll notice no teak out of the cockpit, and I think this non slip works really well actually, maintenance free. Big Lazarette was part of the design brief from the beginning, so this owner wanted to get a full-size bike in there, spare anchors in there, access to the steering gear, plenty of stowage. You've got these great gates, you've got one aft and two amidships as well to get on, on, on and off the boat. This one 
drops down to give you access to the swim platform and the swim platform is totally separate to the lazarette so the lazarette is dry uh, and then an extra swim ladder that stores inside the lazarette and fits onto the swim platform. Big Davitz, he's got a big dinghy, a three and a half metre dinghy on this which for a 57 foot boat with a 20 horsepower central console dinghy is gives you that another dimension when you're at anchor. These aft quarter lockers, this one is empty uh, and the port side one takes two big 13 kilo gas bottles as well. Then moving forward along the side decks, it's easy enough to get out of the cockpit, but you'll notice there's quite a lot in terms of trip hazards once you are here. So moving forward, it's good to have a handle on something, have a take, put a hand on something as you're moving forward. But these are good, high, sturdy guard rails. They're mounted, as you see, on this chunky, fixed, bare teak tow rail, cat rail. Uh, makes a big difference, actually. It's every single fitting you look at, you notice how sturdy and chunky it is. And then moving forwards, lo long, flat coach roof helps because the more I've been on the boat, you'll notice as we go forward, the standing rigging gets in the way, it hinders your access. So actually, if it's relatively flat, you end up walking along the top of the coach roof. If you are going down the side decks, good, good things to grab hold of when you are at heel. But this is the part where I mean, you know, you have to come inside the lowers here. So walking along up here with your fenders and stuff makes a bit more sense. Other thing you notice on there, proper durards with the grills around them. You have that fresh air coming in, into the interior. You're, big factor on this one, owner choice, but carbon rig and this big V-boom. Um, it's a lot to take in aesthetically. It works well, you know, to stack the main, which is on a hark and switch track. So you can lower that and drop the main into here and it, the sail is all tidied away quite easily. I still think, uh, you know, a single line reefing main is a good way to go on a, on a yacht this size. You don't, they'll probably offer this as standard within mast furling, but um, up to each owner to choose. Moving forward up onto the foredeck, Genoa pole for poling out the Yankee. Uh, and yeah, it's a cutter rig, which Rustler always prefer to do. And I think you know, it's proven to be a really handy setup. Stay sail option for going upwind or when the breeze does get up. And then the Yankee with a high cut to the clue means you still have good vision under, underneath the clue. A lot of the time with a big Genoa, overlapping Genoa, uh, you lose that, that lured vision. Deep sail locker, bosun's lock in there. You have an asymmetric in there if you want, or a lot of fenders in this case. Anchor windlass, double bow roller for the anchor, and a nice little pulpit seat as well. So in terms of the design, Russell wanted to basically make a larger 42. So a Stephen Jones design again, and they wanted to keep the elegant aesthetics. By that, you've got the counter, counter stern. Obviously, designs have moved beam your aft, and you feel that in the cockpit. A skeg hung rudder a long cord keel, solid monolithic hull all the way through. And it's a relatively low freeboard. They wanted to keep the boat low with the coach roof and the freeboard. Nice traditional shear line and a spoon bow as well. So you don't, you know, the trend these days is to have a straight plumb stem, but here that shape of bow going through the waves, lovely motion. And you'll notice it's quite full in the ends, both ends, so in the bow sections as well. And you'll see what that buys you in terms of interior volume. So stepping down the sturdy companionway into this interior with a sort of raised, semi-raised saloon, you get an effect of this open plan layout, but it's a conservative one. Uh, I tell you, it's, it's one that grows on you. As I mentioned before, the layout's been prioritised for lots of space in the cockpit, plenty of galley space, but connecting 
with this massive saloon. So that gets the, the center part of the boat, socializing area of the boat, gets the lion's share of it. But it's also very seaworthy. It's such a solid boat to walk everywhere you've got these solid fiddles to grab hold of. Moving about the boat a heel is easy, but also it's concentrated in this central area. Chart tables where it should be. Galleys easy to get at to make yourself a cup of tea on passage. Day heads right by the companionway. It's, it's the product of a lot of owner feedback and you can see that throughout. Now this particular boat is perhaps more traditional than it could be because the standard would be in European oak and this owner wanted blue upholstery, satin teak finish. Um, but you can imagine, you know, it would be a lot lighter with oak and with these hull lights, with the overhead hatches, with the port lights, it's loads of views, natural light. It's a very inviting, welcoming space. So it's a simple three cabin layout, um, two aft twins. They, they like to have the owners double forward away from any sort of slapping noises. This particular owner has gone for twin, two twin cabins for an, and the standard would be a double. But as I mentioned, straight down from the companionway, proper chart table right where you went, want it. Angled panel here for your instruments, lifting chart table, stowage, grab bag stowage underneath the seat. Proper size Ooh. pilot book there for, to fit for perfectly for your pilot guides. Another thing is that there's a lot of electronics obviously on a boat this size, so they've split that up into handy sized panels. So your nav lights are here, your 20 volt, 24 volt panel, and then your 240 volt panel, all separate. Russell lights to keep weight central so the tanks are low down underneath the saloon big tanks so nearly a thousand liters of fuel nearly a thousand liters of water in the bilges proper deep bilges on this and this is underneath here is the engine so it's actually the gen set under the companionway um, and then right in the center underneath this galley console which is easy enough to access from here but this is your filters and what you need to get at and see easily under this floor panel and then you've got the starboard side of the shaft driven engine so you've got the injectors and stuff to get at from this side as i say inside here this all pulls out that lifts up easily so you've got top access to the engine and yeah this sole panel behind here lifts up as well so you've got access to the start to the aft side of the engine stern gland that sort of thing as well then you're into this fast saloon you could have a dozen of your closest mates sat around here uh, look at the quality of the joiner work this table actually lifts up so you can have half of it in play more of a coffee table fiddled there there's stowage all underneath these sofa seats this this side and the starboard side, that long sofa berth, have lee cloths and fittings for them as well. Uh, and there's just usable stowage in lots of areas where you want them, including obviously the bottle stowage below this. This owner has gone for a higher locker here. Uh, that would normally be down here, be a sort of bar console. Still got the tumbler stowage there, pouring whiskies out. But he wanted a full-size dryer as well as a full-size washing machine. So the good usable stowage continues into the aft forward cabin, main wardrobes as you come in. And yeah, this is where you can see where that forward volume, you get enough to get up sides of the double berth each side and sleep with your head forward. Uh, and that's again, because the sail locker has pushed that bulkhead far enough aft to get that width there. And it's a good sized cabin really, it's nice and light, plenty of natural light and you know you've still got a good six foot plus headroom in here uh, and a decent size ensuite heads and shower, separate shower in there as well. So as I mentioned, day heads just where you want it. 
So you know, there's a washing machine there, a full dryer for, further forward, I guess a washer dryer combo might be a better use of space. Gen set access below it. The aft cabins are near enough identical, both twins in this setup. But this side on the starboard side has its own access to a heads and separate shower. I like the fact that both this aft one and the forward one has proper shower doors, uh, heated towel rail, that sort of thing. Anyway, as you come into this aft cabin, it's quite cozy for this size boat, but that's what you get on a traditional hull shape. You start to lose your bilge as, as the hull shape comes up. So there's very little stowage underneath these berths. Ordinarily, the standard boat, this would be a double berth at this height. Uh, but I like having single berths, nice for passage, passage making. You probably sleep on this inboard one by choice. Uh, coming to use it, you sort of step up, quite a big step up into here to still get some standing headroom to get into your bunk, get changed. Um, but you can see it's plenty light enough. Nice view out there, hull window. Escape hatch each side into the cockpit. So you can poke your head up and look at the conditions. Good size wardrobe here. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, gen set access and, and washboard stowage inboard there. It's a pleasure to find yourself sort of stroking a boat because the joinery work is lovely, the finish is great, but all the edges are rounded. It feels proper and, you know, handmade. Look at this teak trim around the insets for the blinds. Everything's done properly. There is plenty of competition in the mid 50 foot luxury cruiser market, but by sticking to what they know and do best, Rustler has brought something new and appealing. This 57 is refreshing in its conservative and dependable nature. It's a boat that makes you feel safe, a yacht you really want to spend more and more time aboard, something that would be as at home cruising here in the West Country, exploring the Baltic, or trade wind sailing around the globe.